Walking on a heaven road, gonna lay down my heavy load. Cause Jesus said he walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the day, sunshine in every way. So why not come along and join me? Walking on a heaven road. Young folks walking hand in hand, singing with the angel band. Old folks ain't so tired no more, cause we're walking on a heaven road. Walking on a heaven road, gonna lay down my heavy load. Cause Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the day, sunshine in every way. So why not come along and join me walking on a heaven road? Yep, we're walking on the heaven road. Hey everybody, it's nice to see you. It's the service for Sunday, May 17th. It's the Sunday before Ascension Sunday and Memorial Day Sunday, and two weeks before Pentecost, which is the birthday of the church. So uh, why don't we start our time together with prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray your graciousness and your power upon us as we walk upon the heaven road, as we seek your grace and your blessing for the everydayness of our lives. We pray for those who continue to battle and to struggle with issues surrounding COVID-19. We pray for those who have other illnesses, for people in nursing homes or people who have suffered heart attacks or those who are suffering bereavements in these last few weeks. We just pray, Lord, that your blessings shine upon us and that you help us to be instruments of your peace, of your care, and of your love. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The scripture for today comes from the book of Ephesians. Oh, there we go. Okay. And we're starting at the first chapter and the 15th verse. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And I keep asking that the Lord of our God, Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Apostle Paul is writing this letter while he's in prison. And if you look at the historical background on the book of Ephesians, he's writing it to the church of Ephesus, which is in Asia Minor. But when you look at the entire letter, he's really writing it to the global church as much as global was at the time when he was doing his missionary journeys and writing all these wonderful letters. And one of the ways that he would support and care for the churches that he had met and ministered to was just to write him letters of encouragement. And that's one of the things that he does in this letter. He says, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's how he begins this letter. He always starts with something that's full of glory and full of power and full of love. And then he hits them in the middle 
And then he puts them back together at the end with saying wonderful things. And I, when I was in seminary, my professor of um, sermons, you know, the guy who taught us how to preach, would do what he called sandwich criticism. He'd say something really nice at the end. He'd let you know where you blew it in the middle. And then he put you back together so you could actually leave his classroom in one, in one piece. And I remember one, um, one classroom day, I had not done my homework. Anybody else there? And I just thought I could get away with it because I was kind of Dr. Edavine's favorite student. So being his favorite student, I figured there was a lot I could get away with. Um, yeah, no. Walked into class that day. <laughs> I don't know what I was supposed to be preaching on, but I did some kind of BS stuff. And he looked me square in the eye after that 15 minutes and he said, well, Beth, I like the way you tied your shoes. <laughs> let me tell you what happened after that. He let me know that I had not spent the time that I needed. I had not done the research. I was basically obliterating Paul's words by my own foolishness. And then at the end, he said, oh, and I like your outfit. Okay, so a little bit later on in the seminary lunchroom, I went up to Dr. Edavine and I said, I thought I was your favorite. And he looked at me and he said, you are my favorite, but I want you to do the best of what you can be, not the worst of what you can be. And if I didn't take you to task, you would always think that you could get away with this and you can't. The fact is, I love you so much. And he said that back in, in this day, we'd have him up on charges, you know, for saying something like that. But, you know, Dr. Edervin was a real sweet guy, and he said, you know, I love you so much that I just want you to be your best, not your worst, and think that you can get away with it. And the Apostle Paul's a lot like this. He loves these churches like you would not believe. He has everything going for them. He prays for them, he loves them, but sometimes he gets a little irritated with the fighting that goes on and all the little, you know, stuff that happens sometimes in a church. And, and he just wants the best for them. And the way he puts this, and I think this is one of the most beautiful passages in the scripture. He says, for this reason, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. And then he goes on a little bit later on, and he says, talks about his incomparably great power for us that believes, and that you are enlightened with the eyes of your heart. So what does it mean to be enlightened with the eyes of your heart? Someone once said that the best way to a person's soul is to look them square in the eye and see what's in their eyes because the eyes are the gateway to the soul. And I think that's really true. If you look at someone who's in love with you, for example, you see big pupils and it's just beautiful. It's probably like when Delene got home, you could just see by the eyes and by everyone who was standing around, how excited they were, and us too, that she was just home. Your eyes just fill your face with love. And the Apostle Paul says that that's what God's purpose is for us. He wants us to be filled with all good and wonderful things because he just loves us so much. And so the eyes of our heart are the way that we see things. Now, there are some people that see things from a really negative kind of standpoint. You know, have you ever run into anybody in the grocery store or the gas station and you look over and, and you say, so how are things going? And sometimes it's a really sad story that you need to hear. And other times it's just complaint after complaint after complaint after complaint. My hangnail hurts. 
I stubbed my toe on the car. My cat wouldn't come in last night and I was really worried. You know, it's just stuff after stuff after stuff. And when you walk away, you're feeling like, oh my gosh, what just happened here? You know, there's some people that see the glass half empty and see it half full. And the Apostle Paul wants you to see the glass as half full. Yeah, it's kind of a rough time right now. It is. You know, we're just yearning to go to high school graduations and celebrate our college kids and, you know, just be together. In fact, I've got a bunch of friends coming over for, for breakfast because, you know, that's our thing. But there's hand sanitizer at the door when they get there. There's chairs spaced six feet apart throughout the house. I love my friends. I can hardly wait to see them, but I want them to be safe, right? And that's kind of what's going on now. We want one another to be safe. We want everybody to be cared for, and we want everyone to know that the power of God does not just disappear when things happen, but with the eyes of the heart, we are blessed by the power of who God is. And so the Apostle Paul writes to this church at Ephesus, and he's really looking at a broader audience, and he says, you know what? Do the best you can. Fulfill God's promise in you. Be the best kind of person you can be, the best kind of Christian you can be. Reach out when people are hurting. Reach out when people just need to share their stories of love and be the person that God has called you to be because you look at one another just as God looks at you with the eyes of the heart. May your days in this coming week be filled with sunshine and joy, with growing things, with the power of him that calls us together to be the church, and yet may you be filled with his love. Amen. Good to see y'all. Have a great week, and we love you. Take care. Bye-bye.